Guys, I decided to skip Robin so I can't make content about her, but luckily I can still preach about Ron May. I finally finished building my slow Ron May with help from the recent 3 times relic event and also by target farming the sprightly Von Wack simulated universe and I want to show you some low cycle clears with it. For those wondering what slow Ron May is, it's when your Ron May is 120 speed to hit the Von Wax threshold for action advance while still being slow enough to barely take turns for your zero cycling. Also instead of energy regen, you go with as much break effect as possible. This increases your damage dealt. Basically this build allows you to start the fight with Ron May's ultimate with the Von Wax action advance and to have her ultimate up for the entire fight because Ron May will barely ever get a turn. I also wanted to do an E0 as zero blade showcase to demonstrate that blade's light cone is not necessary. Recently I've been seeing content creators claiming that Blade needs a signature light cone and I don't agree with that take. Blade has decent alternative options. S5 Secret Vow is what I use and I know it's a gacha cone but it was on so many light cone banners that unless you're completely new to the game, you probably have a few lying around. Then you also have the Sam light cone which is free but I personally don't have it so I can't say for certain how strong it is. Anyways, here is my Zero Cycle MLC 11 clear with S5 Secret Vow on E0 Blade, Ron May is E1-S1 like usual, sadly I can't weaken my Ron May. <laughs> Branya E1 on Planetary Rendezvous, though here Branya's E1 is completely useless. Sparkle is E0 on Past and Future. So basically only Ron May has a signature cone. And this is my favorite team comp for Blade at the moment. Sadly, I can't do a decent MOC 12 blade showcase since both sides have wind resistance and no wind weakness. And with Ron May, you kinda want wind weak enemies to break them. My favorite blade team comp right now is the unlimited blade team with Sparkle, Branya, and Ron May. It's super fun and very strong, but the drawback to this team is, especially in MOC, is that you kinda wanna be on element because blade's your only damage dealer and he's wind. You won't always have the luxury of on element enemies, so a more universal team for Blade may be desired. This is where Jade comes in, and warning, mute the video now if you want to avoid spoilers, otherwise I'll start discussing some dream material. Jade is a follow up quantum AoE unit that seems to work very well with Blade, because each time Blade attacks she drains his health and adds an extra tick to his follow up stack. This will let Blade get much more follow-up attacks off during a fight, while also providing a strong quantum sub-DPS option, meaning more type coverage and more damage source. She also gives 30 speed to Blade, and with the Von Wax set on Jade, I think according to Blade main calculations, you could theoretically have Blade at 136 speed or more to then outspeed Branya at 161 speed, so that you can get Jade into Blade, into Branya, into Blade. This can be very potent if her current kit holds true until release, and also frees up your sparkle for your other team. Now the drawback is that Jade's personal follow-up attacks are based on how many enemies you hit, and in an MOC fight with one or two enemies, it will take a while to stack up. But if you have E1 Jade, it doubles your stack generation and makes low enemy encounters like in the MOC much more manageable, therefore right now, I'm quite interested in an E1 Jade. Her light cone also seems decent, it's pretty much a standard DPS light cone, it's quite good. And personally, since I'm very very close to a guaranteed light cone, I'm basically 5 pulls away and have guarantee. I can basically pick up her light cone for free if I want it. So anyways, I'm personally very excited for Jade. I think if you guys are fellow Blade enjoyers, reconsider blowing all your jades right now if you don't particularly love or need the current banner characters.